Chafing Armor Podcast, Episode 9, Cleanup on Aisle 3. Welcome back to the Chafing Armor Podcast. I'm your host and entirely evil Dungeon Master, Michael Corley. With me tonight is Izzy. Izzy, tell us one fact about Morezzi. She bleeds red like a human and is self-conscious about that. Excellent. And Pinton, or should I say James, since I'm already mixing up the names. James, tell us one fact about Pinton. Well, you got me on the spot. Uh, uh, Pinton, well, uh, he's taken a vow of poverty, and that's going to cause some problems probably in the future, but uh, we're going to live with it. Uh, no gold for you. And Dare, tell us one fact about Tix. Uh Tix is very good at woodworking, having been raised in a woodworking family, but really cannot stand woodcraft. Interesting. And finally, Lee, tell us one interesting thing about Osokai. Osokai, despite everything, how he looks, how he acts, has a soft spot for children. As is evident now, and an excellent segue to where we are in the adventure, the group had been reunited unexpectedly as Osokai came riding in on a Zorn. The Zorn seemed to take an unhealthy interest in Tix when suddenly its mouth began to glow and it retreated down underneath where Osokai had come from. They had found him with a strange wood elf named Zuana. She had been sent to rescue a dozen drow children. As far as we know, only five of them had survived. However, the sharp ears of Osokai had heard the crying of another child in a strange grate. Tix had volunteered to go inside with his smaller size and stealthiness to find this final child who found it, only to find that the child was looking in terror at something just over Tix's shoulder. I was talking before the show that in order to make this spot check, you needed to get a 15, and that's exactly what you rolled. So you do realize there is something behind you. Tix, what are you going to do? I'm going to spin around with my axe and my shield ready and see what's coming towards me. Indeed, something is coming towards you. Something is gliding towards you. Something is oozing towards you. A large, well, the name is kind of on the tin, gelatinous cube. Ugh. That's fun. Yes, and... Um, I, I, I'm not going to actually make y'all make a knowledge check. I'm going to assume that both... Tix and Penton are enough world-wise to know this, uh, and possibly even Osokai with his dungeoneering skill, that uh, gelatinous cubes will pretty much eat anything. They will eat anything, and it would make sense if you were able to trap one in a place full of refuse, that it might clean it up for you, but it also would clean up any living thing that is within that chamber, and it is now coming towards you. By the way, Osokai, you are able to see this happening as it's happening, though you are on the other side of the room, and I need Osokai and Tix to roll for initiative. All right. I got an 18. I got an 8. Well, Tix, that puts you in the lead, which makes sense since you are right next to the ooze. There is a small child behind you as well. You are currently blocking access uh, to the ooze to engulf this small child. What are you going to do? I'm going to drop my axe and uh, try and grab my torch and flint box and light a torch before it since it moves slowly, I'm hoping that I can do it without any too, mu too much pressure. I will allow you a chance to do that because you are very skilled at this kind of thing and you're used to working under pressure, but you will need to successfully roll to do so. Okay. Um, uh, I'll let you apply any appliable skill that you can convince me would apply to this situation. Okay, let's see. I have... Uh, out, of, out of character concentration. Uh... 
concentration is a two, but I have wilderness lore, which is a four. Would that with the wilderness lore towards camping and making fires be more useful? Uh, I will definitely that's... allow wilderness lore. So go ahead and make that okay. roll and add that. All right. So that's a plus four. And I got a 17. So that would be a 21. That is definitely going to succeed. You are able to light the torch. However, that is your entire action. Osokai, you did not see this ooze, but as it is almost entirely transparent, uh, with the exception of some floating bits of refuse, I'm sorry, with some floating bits of refuse, and unfortunately, some bones inside of it, uh, you did not immediately see it, but it is now coming towards both Tix and the child. What are you going to do? Okay. Um, how far away from me are they? They are about 30 feet away, because this is a fairly large room. How big is the gelatinous cube, roughly? It is about 10, well, let's say a little bit less than that. It's about 7 feet square. Okay. Um, I'm going to hope the Dungeon Master is nice to me. Can I, am I able to recall what Zuana said to the children when she was hustling them to calm down? Uh, I will certainly let you make a roll to see if you do remember that. All uh, right. Please don't screw me over. That is a natty 20. <laughs> Not only do you remember it, but you say it with perfect drow inflection. And the child immediately looks up at you and nods slowly, even though he is clearly scared. But that still allows you to make an action, since obviously that's speech. Yep. Okay, so gelatinous cube cannot hear, cannot see, can only smell and sense. This is out of character. I don't know. I probably don't know any of this. Um, Your character does have dungeoneering, so you... Uh, without even needing to roll, I know that your character knows what a gelatinous cube is and has a basic understanding of its properties. Okay. Um, does it fill the space? Uh, no. The roof is taller. The roof is probably uh, about seven. I, I, I'm just going for easy math. I'm going to say it's about 17 feet high. Uh, it's sort of uneven in some places, but it's it's much higher than the actual cube. What about width? Uh, the room is fairly large uh, because this room seems to be uh, most, if not all, of the under room of the area that you had run through towards the beginning of your adventure before. Uh, you would probably think the room is, you know, well over 100 feet across. All right. I'm going to, now that I have the child's attention, I'm going to arm indi hand indicate to go around the cube and come towards me, hoping Tick sees the same thing since he is facing me. Um, since the cube is relatively slow, I would hope I would hope Tix would also grab the child's hand just in case, since there is a lot of refuse around, um, and try and make their way back towards me, hoping that all that the cube wants is the trash that was surrounding the child. Okay. And I will tell you, though, that you do not know for certain how fast this thing can move. You know, you you, you don't think it's a speed demon, but you do not know for certain. I'm just, I'm just letting you know that. And I need to make a roll here. Oh, that is unfortunate. Uh, so in this case, my failure is actually against y'all. Uh, I rolled another one. But in this case, what it means is the child is petrified and he cannot move on his own. I grab his hand and try and pull him up next to me as we start edging around uh, the gelatinous cube. Okay. Uh, I'm going to make a roll here. The ooze stops. It clearly can sense you, but it doesn't seem to have been able to zero in on you perfectly. So it is moving towards you, but it's not moving towards you the way like a hunter who has caught its prey in its perfect sights. So it is moving towards you, but it hasn't caught you yet. So you are successfully moving away from the ooze. Okay. And I will continue to edge around the 
uh, gelatinous cube, pulling the child with me and heading towards the exit and Osokai. Is there any large heaviest refuse somewhere near where I can pick up and throw towards where they used to be, hopefully, just to try and create some kind of vibration confusion. Uh, there isn't a lot of large stuff because everything in here had to have fallen through the grate, with the exception of the child, of course. But uh, there are enough things that, you know, are vaguely solid that you could try to throw if you want to do that. And I just need you to make a, uh, you know, a, basically a, a, a throw uh, with your dexterity modifier. All right, here we go. That is a 14. Dexterity modifier is 2, so that's 16. That is successful, and I'm going to make a roll for the ooze. It rolls a 9, which is not terribly well. Uh, so it does pause slightly, allowing y'all to get a slight more advantage uh, as you edge your way to the door. Um, and it's going to make another sense roll. Again, it pauses, it stops moving towards the sound that you heard, but that was enough. That was enough that it allows both Tix and the child to edge their way back to the door. All right, hustle guys, come on. All right, you slip your way through and uh, clang, I assume, the gate shut behind you. Yes. Oh, yes, and latch it and duct um, tape it. And once, <laughs> and once again, I, I, I have to say that as the dungeon master, uh, that while we all revel in combat, uh, I am proud of all of you for uh, accessing the situation and realizing that it was not actually necessary to fight this creature. There certainly, again, are many scenarios where you would have had to fight this creature, uh, but there actually was no reason to. And so that is actually good role playing to get out of there <laughs> instead of fighting something for absolutely no reason. And as you may or may not know, uh, failing a fight against a gelatinous cube, it's not great. There, there's some really unpleasant consequences. Yeah, I don't feel like being gelatin. It's not on my agenda. All right, let's... J-E-L-L, -L, ouch. Let's book it back to the staircase and see if we can meet up with the others. Okay, uh, you, you turn to make your way to the staircase, and there are... Three dwarves blocking your path. Each of them have the slightly decayed one side of their face. We'll say that's on the left-hand side of their face. And the brand on the right-hand side of their face that looks similar to those tokens that y'all had found before. They are blocking your entrance to the staircase area. I say in dwarvish, greetings, fellow adventurers. Uh, would you kindly let us by so we can get this child to safety? All the while, I am getting my getting ready to drop the torch and get my axe back out. Each of them, in unison, reaches and pulls out a weapon. You notice that their eyes are beginning to glow in a similar fashion to the baleful blue glow that you saw in the mouth of the Zorn. You also, uh, if you, uh, Osokai, if you could make a perception check for me. All righty. That is a 17. Your sharp ears as a ranger, you detect uh, a sound and you spin to see three more behind you. But these are all gnolls and all of them are pulling out weapons. And that's the exact moment that the rest of the group returns. And they are all behind the three uh, dwarves. So Penton and Merezi, uh, you return to find your path blocked by three creepy looking dwarves. On the other side of them is Osokai and Tix with a small drow child. And on the other side of them is three Knolls, all of them holding weapons. There is no preamble. The Knolls and the Dwarves, by the way, they're entirely ignoring you, Merezi, and you, Penton. They advance to attack. Everyone roll for initiative. Ten. Ooh. Fifteen. Eighteen. 
Okay. So uh, 16 for me. Okay. So that's uh, Pinson that got a 16? Correct. And Tix, you got a 15? Yes, sir. My, uh, I'm sorry, Lee, uh, what did you get? 18. Okay. That puts you first, Lee. Or I should say, Osokai. Okay, so the Nulls have the brand too? They absolutely do. Their faces are partially rotted on one side, and they have the brand on the other. They look almost identical to the ones you had faced in the tunnels. Okay, so there's no getting the two to fight. Uh... So there are three dwarves in front of me. There are six six gnolls, you said? Uh, three gnolls. Six uh, creatures total. Okay, six creatures total. Three ahead, three behind. <sighs> All right. It's worked before. Let's see if it'll work again. Zawana is with me, right? She's not with Penton and... Uh, yes, thank you for clarifying. Uh, Zawana is also with you in the middle. I am going to... Let's go. I'm going to shift... And let's. I'm going to attack. Uh, we 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 need we need a we need a uh, a passageway. So I need to get rid of these dwarves because we need to get out of here. So I am going to I'm going to nod to Zuana and indicate to the child. I'm going to nod at the one to the right of us, and I'm going to attack him. And I'm going to attempt to render him prone. Okay, roll for that. That is a 15 plus my strength. That is a 19. That will succeed. As I pull, push him to the floor, hopefully I push him to the floor, I'm going to yell to take the child and run. Okay. Uh, it is not her turn, but she nods curtly to you. Uh, it is, however, Penton's turn. Penton you and Morezzi had just made your way back up. The reason you were able to get back so quickly is Sanar, who is the unlikely paladin dragonborn, had been coming back down to check on y'all. And so he found you kind of halfway and he took the children from y'all and y'all immediately went back. So that's the only reason you're here back so quickly. But okay. as you came back down this passage, y'all were, of course cautiously making your way down you haven't been here before you run into the backs of four dwarves who have drawn their weapons and have begun to advance on osokai and Tix and this elf woman what are Weren't you there three dwarves when they're three dwarves oh, I'm sorry. I, I i don't know why i keep getting I, apparently math is escaping me tonight but uh yes three dwarves it's gully dwarf math uh yes th two no more than two right um okay so uh Osakai just took one of them, knocked one of them over, correct? That is correct. Okay. Was it like left, right, or center? Uh, it was, I believe, his right, uh, your left. Okay. Um, well, clearly he's trying to make a pathway since he's knocking him down. Uh, I'm going uh, I'm, I'm, to... I, it's obvious that these are like oozy zombie dwarves. They are not the zombies that you had seen before. Yet your sense of magic, you sense that there is something kindred going on here. Okay, but clearly not nice, at least evilish, or at least under the influence of evil. Absolutely. These are, these are dwarves that are without the slightest hesitation attacking. There's no preamble. There's no talking. They are just attacking without the slightest hesitation. Okay, well, this is an important scene, uh, situation, so I'm going to attack the center one with uh, with an acid splash, uh, which is one of the last attacks I have left after all this combat we've been doing, yeah, exactly. um, and, and use my final uh, burst of uh, Bahamut's uh, prayer along with that. That will be a D3 for the acid splash, and then a, the uh, uh, pair of D6s uh, as the bonus damage for that. That'll be the last time I'll be able to do that today. Uh, so let's go with the D3 first. And that is a 6, which is a 3. So then the boxcars. <laughs> I rolled boxcars again. So that's a total of uh, uh, 15 points. Nice. 15 points. Oh, my goodness. So um... well, apparently Bahamut really likes me today. <laughs> Uh, well, and and in all in all seriousness, you of course feel Bahamut when you use this magic. The 
the dragonness in your soul that is part of you being a spell a spell scale sorcerer you can really tap into it right now like it's just on fire right now and tix as you are readying yourself for your next attack you see the center dwarf and then you are looking at penton through a hole <laughs> that has appeared in the middle of this dwarf as as a, a ball of acid just eats its way through its chest instantly the dwarf looks dumbfounded and just collapses uh and he is no more and now it is actually your turn tix i will take a swing at the nearest dwarf that is still standing okay that would be the one on the left and I got a 18 plus 4, so 22. And that is absolutely going to hit. Roll for damage. Only a D6. And I did a whole paper cut's worth of damage. One point. Woo. No well, bonuses? Uh, not to damage. Interesting. So uh, that is one point oh. of damage. So you, the, the dwarf is wearing leather armor, so it somewhat bites into the leather, but you do feel that you got a hit in nonetheless. And now, uh, Marezzi, it is... Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, it, I'm afraid it is the Knoll's turn. <laughs> the Knolls are advancing behind y'all. Um, and... Do... And do. So, um, one of them attacks you, Tix, and his attack uh, with his long, wicked knife absolutely fails... On your armor. However, Yay. the other one does not. Uh, the other one is able to attack you with a, a hatchet, essentially. And he does four points of damage to Tix. Oh. So he gets a good hit in. Uh, the last one is trying to attack Osokai. But Osokai is moving so fast attacking the dwarf that he entirely misses. And now it is Morezi's turn. What would you like to do? Well, Marezzi has been waiting patiently due to the laws of this magic game universe and is now very excited to draw her halberd and would like to attack the dwarf that her compatriot uh, completely failed to uh, kill. Oh, now that's not fair. He did do one point of damage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pick on the little guy. Okay, go ahead and roll uh, for that. This is not natural. Uh, yes, not natural with the modifier, a 20. That will definitely hit. And the damage is... Oh, wait. Even if you have a modifier, isn't rolling a zero a very specific thing? Well, once again, you can't get a zero if you're rolling the other dice. A zero means you got a 10. Oh, okay. Uh, the damage one? Then 13 damage. Okay, so uh, 13... Uh, you know, sometimes uh, those little drops uh, are what make all the difference at the end. Uh, that 13 plus one uh, is actually enough to kill him. So it, it, he had this terrible paper cut, but uh, it was the paper cut plus the halberd. The paper cut of doom. The paper cut of doom that uh, buried itself into his neck uh, from behind that spells the doom for this dwarf, and this dwarf collapses to the ground, dead at the hands of Merezi. And now it is the dwarf's turn. Unfortunately, two-thirds of them are dead. <laughs> the last one is going to try to get up, and that means that, Osokai, you have an attack of opportunity if you would like to roll. Yes, I would. I am going to uh, attack because I am currently shifting, I get two attacks, uh, one with each hand. So first attack is a 15 plus 7, so that's 22. That will do it. Now, for an attack of opportunity, does that, that also include those two attacks? Uh, yes, because an attack of opportunity is a standard attack. Okay, I, um, I will allow it. I, also, I think it's I could, great. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to use things like flurry of blows or... Um, any other attack bonus if I didn't already have this one because of shifting. Okay, we'll go ahead and roll for damage on that then. Right. So my claws are a d4. That is two points of damage to the first attack. 
Okay, and it will roll for the second attack. Second attack is a natty 20. And, oh, boy. And that's a four, so that's eight damage. Do you not have any uh, strength bonus for that's, damage? That's with the strength bonus. Ah. So you see this dwarf pulling himself up off the ground. Um, and, and I'm trying to remember, is it, when, they're, when they're standing up, is that their entire action? Uh, please note that if that is the case, that will also be the case for y'all. Uh, I'm just. Yes. I, uh, I, I thought that was from, the case. Getting up, yeah, getting up from prone is a full action. Okay. I, I thought that was the case. But remember, I will also use that against you in the future. So he's trying to get up, and basically you see Osakai just go bam, bam, <laughs> smack him twice as he's getting up. But he manages to get up, but he is, is very bloodied now as he's stumbling upwards. Uh, and he has now uh, used his turn because he had to stand up. And that means that it is uh, Zoana's turn, and she is going to cast a spell. And I'm going to do a little saving throws here. Okay. Um, she casts a web on the gnolls to try and stop their advance. Unfortunately, it only entangles one of them. The other two are able to either break free or avoid it. But one of them has become hopelessly trapped in this webbing. And that brings it back to you, Osukai. All righty. Uh, once again, I'm going to indicate Zawana should probably leave, but she's her own person. Um, and I am going to... I am going to have to... Yeah, I'm going to have to use my turn to stand up as well because rendering him prone also rent, rendered myself prone. So if he likes, he gets an attack of opportunity. Uh, you know what? He does like. Okay, guys, seriously, I, I got to get some new dice. He rolls a one. Uh, oh, I forgot to roll my percentage. Well, actually, the percentage only count when you're um, when uh, we're in combat. So, ooh, he came close. That's an 86, but that's still not high enough to have something truly horrible happen. But he just misses. Uh, and so you have used your uh, round standing up. And yes. that brings it back to Penton, to Acid Boy. There are two dead dwarves. There is one uh, beat up dwarf. Uh, there is one webbed uh, knoll. And there are two free knolls. Okay, uh, I'm going to take a good old fashioned swing at the damaged uh, dwarf just to clear him out of the way. Let's see what, how it goes. Uh, let's see. Uh, modified 10. I'm afraid that's not quite going to do it. Uh, I'm going to say that the only reason you don't hit him is because he was standing up and he literally accidentally moves out of your way. Uh, so unfortunately, that does not succeed. But Tix, it is now your turn. Well, I am going to take a swing at the last door. All right, go I for hope that. that. You know give a, a little better paper cut of doom. And that is a 15. That will succeed. Roll for damage. A whole four points. Four points, but uh, guess what? He has 14 hit points, and that does it. You bury it into his chest. He collapses. You now Yay. all have effectively uh, nothing blocking you. Uh, unfortunately... It is the Knoll's turn, so before y'all can do anything else, they are able to advance on you from behind. Uh, ooh, and that. Um, and Osokai, you are actually struck by one from behind, and he does uh, three points of damage to you, Osokai, with a long, wicked knife burying into the back of your leg as you are attacking from the front. Uh, the other one who is attacking Tix, once again, you are very happy that you took the time and money and effort to get this good armor because uh, his hatchet fails upon it. And now, Morezi, it is your turn. All of the dwarves are dead, but there are two gnolls who are approaching from behind. You could attack them if you wish. You would just have to pass by Osokai and uh, Zuwana uh, to do so. Would that take a whole turn? Uh, no, in this case, it would not. You One, uh, you're fairly close. Two, you're also a barbarian, so you're actually able to cover a lot of ground. 
Morezzi barrels past them, uh, targeting one of the gnolls. Uh, let's roll for hitting 18. That will and definitely hit. Damage 12. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, you do 12 points of damage to him? I think so. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, you are a barbarian after all. Uh, you step forward. Uh, Osokai, you get a, a glimpse of this this pole arm coming up in front of you as you see this, this giant barreling barbarian come past you and swing down past you, past the child, past everyone to bury its halberd in the knoll's head and it collapses to the ground dead. Uh, it would be the dwarves' turn, but I think we can skip them. Uh, Zuana, yeah. uh, who has um, seen very clearly your indications that she should leave, snarls, turns to the final knoll and attacks with her quarterstaff. Um, unfortunately, in her rage, she does not succeed. It is able to just barely block her blow with its hatchet, uh, the just barely glancing it off, though it does kind of stumble to the side. She does not succeed. And that actually brings it back to Osokai. There's one knoll left. Osokai is going to snarl in response back at Zuana. Um, he's going to lunge and attack again because uh, while I am still I am still shifted, I shift for... Let me just grab this one. Uh, once per day for a number of rounds equal to three plus my constitution. So I have five. I can do it for five rounds. So I have four rounds left. So I can still shift. I'm going to attack the last one uh, again with my claws. It's, it's the only weapon I can use while shifted. Okay. All right. Here we go. That is a 17. That will most certainly hit. Uh, three damage. Uh, three damage to the knoll. That does not kill it, but you move forward, and as it stumbled to the side to avoid her attack, it comes right into yours, and you catch it in the side of the face with your claw. And it is now Pinton's turn. Oh, goody. Um, let's see. I'm wondering whether I should get myself in the middle of this physical combat. Um, instead, I'm going to um, see if I can get the child away from the attack and uh, get him uh, him or her closer to uh, safety. Okay. Uh, can you make a, I'm going to make this easy on you, a charisma roll for me? I think I might be able to manage that. One. Uh, it's a seven. <laughs> it looks like a one, but it's actually a seven. <laughs> <laughs> I was just uh, honestly curious if you'd roll a one or a not. Uh, a seven is not great, but it does. It is enough to get the kid at least moving. But he doesn't really want to. He he doesn't know who you are, and the stranger grabs him. Even this uh, incredibly charismatic stranger. He's still in the middle of combat and freaking out, uh, and was nearly eaten by a gelatinous cube. But he is moving with you, but unwillingly. So slow. Okay. Uh, Tix, it is your turn. Well, I will cast... No, I'll just take a swing at the knoll. Go for it. And that is a 15. That will succeed. Let me see what damage you get. Two. All right, so you've added another two to the damage there. Uh, Taking a a little nick out of the knoll. Uh, Maybe this is Nick Nolte? Huh? Huh? Oh my goodness! Yeah, that's a pun. Oh. Yeah, okay. I am going to be praying to Garl Glittergold for your salvation <laughs> and quite possibly your punishment. That you <laughs> achieved. I wow. remain entirely unsorry. Um, oh my goodness! And that will actually bring it to Morezzi. Is there anything left for me to fight? Why there is one knoll left. Lovely. <laughs> For hit, I have got an A19, and that for damage, hit. yes, a 10. A 10. A 10 plus 15. I believe that's more than 12. Uh, so you not quite, but nearly cut this gnome in half. As, uh, and, and by the way, Osokai and Tex have to kind of uh, out of the way as you wildly swing your halberd in this small room and nearly cut the knoll in half as it collapses to the ground in a gross heap. 
uh, the child, who is not particularly squeamish, is still kind of going, when he sees uh, this knoll uh, nearly bisected. And the combat has ended. Uh, what would y'all like to do? Morezzi is interested to see if any of their bo- their bodies have any interesting loot. Uh, you do find two more of the tokens, uh, one of each of the one dwarf and one uh, knoll have the tokens on them. Uh, you do also find a total of two gold uh, on them if our if our group treasurer, I believe that is Tix, uh, wants to add that to the total. Uh, Osakai would like okay. to Osakai would like to coup de gras the gnome remaining in the web since no one has dealt with him. Uh, thank you. I was wondering if anyone's going to remember. Uh, he is trying to free himself. Uh, please describe to me how you coup de gras this knoll. Osakai steps towards the knoll in the web and places one massive hand underneath his chin and pushes upward with his claws, okay. ripping his head clean off his body. That is exactly what happens. There is a, a, a wet sound. There is also a grinding sound as the bone and cartilage come loose from the spinal column and the head of the knoll comes clean off. Uh, as you turn around, I would also like you to do one more thing. I would like you to describe to the listeners and also to your fellow players, what do you look like when you've shifted? Okay, so everyone will see a slightly larger, but also slightly more hunched over version of the man who is encountering them. Uh, most of the t- most of his time is spent with his his hands, or more likely paws at this point, uh, relatively close to the ground. He resembles very much, very much a mixture of a large man and a black bear. Uh, while shifted, uh, the muscles are a lot more pronounced. Uh, the, the hair all over his body, uh, he usually has very thick black hair all over his body anyway, gets a little thicker. Uh, his jaw is a little more uh, set, uh, more pronounced. And f- from his fingertips, each and every one of his fingertips, a two-inch black claw can be seen. Um his body goes a little darker. He has a bronze skin normally. It gets takes on a little darker form. And overall, Osukai appears, he, think of werebear, essentially, um, but more human-like. He, hasn't, he doesn't look a lot like a bear. He just, it's, you definitely have the visage of a bear-like uh, form to him. And his speed, strength, and his bearing are all very bear-like. Excellent. Uh, I don't know if anyone wants to react to this uh, image of Osokai. As long as he's dressed, I'm okay with it. <laughs> yes, Looking uh, at you, Penton. Yes, I, I was going to say, uh, one of our group has a tendency to not have clothes on. <laughs> um, but uh, in the middle of this gore and uh, partially covered by the blood of this knoll whose head you have just ripped off, uh, Zuana walks up to you and she places her hand on your chest, not in an aggressive way, but like in a very matter of fact of way. She looks up at you in great satisfaction and she says, yes, I can see why you are summoned to be my bear. And that ends episode nine of Chafing Armor Podcast. Where will our group go next? Will they find refuge in the inn? Or will they be eaten by a gelatinous cube? Find out in episode 10. Great job, everybody. Thanks, man. Woohoo, yes. that was fun. You all Growl. did it. You all did it. <laughs> an excellent job both fighting and not fighting. I'm, I'm very impressed with uh, the choices that y'all have made, which will only hasten your advancement towards uh, level three. Uh, your doom. <laughs> yes, and your doom. Also your doom. Don't forget about that. So you guys all have a wonderful evening, and we will all see you in the adventure soon. Good night. Huh? Good night, everybody. Good night, y'all. Good night. Good night. Good night.